Well, one year ago today, when Governor Baker declared that state of emergency, Massachusetts had 92 confirmed cases, and 70 of those were linked to that Biogen conference in Boston. Since then, as you can see, we've had more than 560,000 cases in our state. Let's show you the timeline of how things unfolded last March. Five days after declaring the state of emergency, schools were ordered to be closed on March 15th of 2020. Five days after that, an 87-year-old man became the first person in Massachusetts to die from COVID-19. And then on March 23rd, Governor Baker ordered all non-essential businesses to be closed and told people that they should be staying at home. I think we all remember what the stores looked like one year ago. Grocery stores were packed. This was video from a year ago. The only difference you could see, nobody wearing masks back then. Toilet paper, couldn't find it anywhere. And Clorox wipes and Lysol also impossible to find. A year later, we're happy to say that grocery shopping is a lot easier. Most items you can find on shelves. There is one thing that may never fully go back to normal. Our lives have gone largely virtual. WBZ's Mike LaCrosse is live from his home office tonight. And Mike, a lot of people in similar situations today. David, yeah, this has been the new norm over the last year for many people, setting up offices anywhere they can, like right here in the middle of their living rooms with this home office. People aren't just working from home, though. They're shopping from home and even working out. So today we're learning the long tail castle. Going virtual is now reality for many small businesses, like Third Piece. The business has changed a uh, complete 180. Owner Kristen Lambert closed her South End boutique in January. They now teach all their knitting classes virtually and sell their products online. We first met Lambert a year ago at her store just as the shutdown began. Today, she's optimistic and looking ahead to a post-pandemic world. It definitely makes me so proud to know that we made it through the last year. It was just so tough for so many people. First off, it's amazing that it's been a year. We also met Ed Harrison from the Waltham-based PR firm Inkhouse a year ago as he started working from home. We've adapted. Harrison says his teams work hard to keep the office culture alive. They even make special, safe, socially distanced home visits when promoting their employees. So we've been able to sort of recreate that, those moments of joy uh, in person. And quite frankly, I, I would love to keep doing that because it's been a lot of fun. Take a slow breath in through your nose. People are also going virtual to create their own moments of joy and peace. Next, inhale, sweep your arms up. For Portsmouth, New Hampshire yoga instructor Danica Ross, it's been a year of connecting with clients at home from her living room. So just to almost treat it as if it's, it is normal. Yes, you might be talking to five black screens, but you know, knowing your words are, are still resonating, knowing your words are still caring. And everyone we spoke with wants to get back into their office, into their studio, into a store. But they all agree going forward, there will always be some sort of virtual component tied to their business. David. All right, Mike, two things. First of all, your home office, beautiful. Second of all, your dog, your new pooch was just in the shop for just a moment. Oh, did you see the dog? <laughs> we did. That's Odacio, and he's a... Uh, He's an Aussie doodle, and I always say that's one of the benefits of at least starting my day from home. I get a lot of visits from him before I leave the there house. There are some benefits from working from home. Mike LaCrosse, thank you so much. We do appreciate it.